they force you back under those covers Lazy mornings they multiply Glory's waiting outside your window We're going up from your slumber, baby, open up your eyes We're going up from your slumber, baby, open up your eyes If you're on the trail, if you're hiking, it is miserable. I mean, you don't even like getting lost in the car. Have you been there? Had one of those friends who said, yeah, I'll show you how to get there, no problem. And in the middle of the night, you're trying to find the movie theater or somebody's house, and you're absolutely frustrated. You know why? Because we lose our sense of control when we get lost. The spiritual disciplines that we're going to be talking about this session have to do with giving up some control so that you can find the freedom and guidance that you need. Two key words, guidance and submission. Guidance has to do with admitting that I don't know it all myself and I need to open myself up to the heart of God and to the voice of others to give me good guidance. Now remember, spiritual disciplines are all about tilling the soil of my heart so God can go to work on me. For instance, open up your Bibles to the book of Acts for a minute. In the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul gets some spiritual guidance. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. Did you catch that? God basically said, don't go that way, go that way. I would love guidance like that. I mean, that would be awesome. Don't buy this car, buy that car. Uh, don't date this girl, date that one. Don't buy this stock, buy this one. Wouldn't you love it? Well, unfortunately, we certainly have God's Word and His Holy Spirit in our life, but we don't often get guidance quite that clear. There are, however, voices in your world if you will cultivate the spiritual discipline of hushing up and listening to those who would guide you. For instance, one more scripture. The book of Proverbs this time. Proverbs chapter 1, beginning about verse 8. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Do you notice the first word of that text? Take a look at it again. Listen. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Do you ever wonder why he had to say, listen? Because before I can accept any kind of guidance, I've got to hush up, open my ears, and listen. Is there a person in your life who you listen to? I don't mean who you complain to. I mean somebody who you go to and you say, man, I'm hurting or I'm struggling, and you let them ask you questions or, or, or just get in a relationship with them where you trust their voice. Oh, man, there was a guy in my life that I, I listened to a lot. His name was Ray. Ray was one of those mature people in my world who could speak truth into my life. Now, I, I don't know about you, but if you don't have those kind of relationships in your world, then this discipline begins with you getting them. Yeah, I know mom and dad are right at the top of the charts, but maybe your mother or father isn't necessarily a, a deeply spiritual person. They still know a lot and you still need to listen to them. But can I challenge you this week to think about who in your life you could turn to for some, some mentoring, some guidance to practice the discipline of listening? Well, who is it? Who is it in your life that you turn to when you want some really good guidance? And why do you choose them? I'm my grandmother. Uh, she's always been the rock in my life. And um, ever since I was little, my parents got divorced. And she's always been the one who remains a uh, steady rock. Um, and I can get an unbiased and honest opinion from her. Uh, a lot of times I turn to my best friends, my closest friends. Uh, throughout life I've consistently turned to uh, my youth minister that I grew up with. I look to my best friends. I really turn to uh, God in prayer, but I also just like everyday life, I turn to my dad and he's really helpful when I need advice. I've always turned to my dad for guidance. Well, because he's just, he's always been open with me even since I was a kid and he's been someone who is always willing to uh, just listen to any kind of problem I had without judgment and then help me both as a parent and as a friend uh, in solving issues. Um, obviously, my mentors would be my parents and then some of my best friends' parents as well. 
My mom, definitely. Because um, she has a lot of strength and she, she has a lot of wisdom just in everyday things for advice. I look to both my parents for guidance just because they are very wise. They know a lot more than I do. And I also look to my youth minister at church because he has helped just mentor me through life. Well, whoever it is that God may have put in your life to point you in the right direction, guidance begins with me being willing to listen and me being willing to ask questions. Let me challenge you with this. Find somebody that you'd be willing to, to spend time with, that you trust, and develop a time of sitting down and just letting them ask you questions. Listening to your own answers and then responding by asking them, what do you hear? You know, a, a group of folks called the Quakers used to use what they called the circle of clarity. When they would sit down with someone who was looking for guidance and they would just ask questions. Now, understand that anytime you're talking to anybody that isn't Jesus, okay, their answers are not going to be perfect. This is not about, oh, whatever you say, I'm going to do, because guidance then can become a, a, a slavishness that's inappropriate. But if I've got a mentor that I trust, and I say to them, this is where I'm at in life, and they ask me questions, that spiritual guidance, well, it becomes like the proverb writer says, those words are a garland around your neck. It's like this beautiful necklace of gold or silver because you're listening and taking in valuable things. Now, Americans classically don't want to do that. We like to be in charge. I'm my own man. I'm my own leader. And yet spiritually, I'm called on to be in the body of Christ where I can learn from one another. That's where this thing called submission comes in. It's the second spiritual discipline I want you to think about this week. Guidance is the ability to open my heart to someone else guiding me. Submission is the choice to listen and follow what God, and when God may speak through other people, calls on me to do. Now, I, uh, I have a real old school guidance system here. It's called the compass, and everybody knows how it works. The needle points towards north. I orient this, and I know that if I want to go north, I got to go that way, and if I want to go west, I got to go that way. Well, today, we use something a, a little more high-tech. In fact, even when you're hiking, you can use these. Uh, mine here is a little Garmin. It's called the GPS unit. Now, my little Garmin guy, as it boots up, is going to connect to satellites in the sky and then going to tell me not only which way is north and south or east or west, but how to get to the summit of the mountain that I'm on or how to get back down to the parking lot, which may be the most important guidance of all. Here's the thing this cool thing does. It even will talk to you. It will tell you, turn right in three miles or turn left now. But I've ridden with people when I've got my little Garmin on and I've set it to take me where I want, want, need to go, who as soon as I start to turn, they say, no, 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 go straight. There's another way to get there. Now, a couple of turns later and we realize we're not where we need to be. A Garmin is a pretty dumb thing to have. A GPS is a foolish thing to use if I'm not willing to go where it tells me. Jesus said this in the book of Luke to his disciples. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. He must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Do you realize that deny yourself means say no to you, take up your cross, means say, my life is no longer the centerpiece. I'm willing to give it up for you, Jesus. But then there's these last two little words. Follow me. How are you doing with submitting to the will of Christ when it comes to purity, when it comes to language, when it comes to how you spend your money? You see, submission is the willingness to let go and follow the spiritual guidance that I receive, whether I'm reading my Bible or whether I'm talking to someone who's giving me really good, solid advice. Not far from here, there's a, a place called Belmont Abbey. In fact, uh, it's a place where I spend a little time learning a bit about solitude.
And you know, one of the things that the monks, which it's not part of my tradition and I don't fully get it, but one of the things that to become a monk you have to do is you have to say, I'm willing to submit to the, to the boss, to the, the head of the abbey. Now, I feel a little funny about anybody saying, you've got to do everything this human has to do. But guys on the teeter-totter, I wonder if we're, well, if we're way over on the other side of the scale, if we're at a place where we think nobody can tell me what to do, that I don't want to listen to leaders at my church, I don't want to listen to my parents. Jesus says, if you're not willing to deny yourself and be a follower, submitting to the will of Christ, submitting when others are guiding you in a healthy and godly way, submitting to a mom and dad. Dude, if stubbornness is your thing, then today's trail guide tip is for you. Learn to listen, learn to follow. I know, it's simple. Learn to listen, learn to follow. The spiritual discipline of guidance is being willing to open your heart up to listen to God and to listen for guidance. The spiritual discipline of submission is the choice to obey when God calls you. The choice to submit to Christ's will instead of your own. So, think about it. Which is harder for you? To hush up and listen? Or to actually obey when the information is in front of you? Well, maybe that'll get your discussion going. God bless you. And God be with you on the journey.